Greetings. I'm here to do a sample Sunday. I'm going to talk about three things. Number one, skin care. Number two, some correspondence I've been having with some folks. And number three, I'm going to talk about my shadow of the week for next week, what I'll be doing in terms of color. First of all, skin care. One of the things that I often talk about is that I am concealer challenged and foundation challenged. For me, what that means is that for a lot of foundations, I have problems with moisture or lack thereof. So that by the end of the day, I'm really seeing deep wrinkles and creasing here and here in particular. In terms of concealers, what happens is that A, I don't get enough coverage, or B, it you know fades, dries out, etc. But I've been having a lot more luck with that lately with both my toxic and my natural products. Here's what I did differently and it had nothing to do with the foundation and nothing to do with the concealer. It had to do with what I put on underneath. First of all, I told you I had run out of the Shutera Argan and Green Coffee Around Eye Serum. I ordered more of that. I got it in. I started using it. Voila, my eyes like it. Concealer sits better on it. I just have less of a problem with dryness under the eyes and things tend to work better with this underneath. I also will use an eye balm over it, but this underneath seems to make a tremendous difference. The other thing that I am doing differently is when I wake up in the morning, instead of using water of any sort to wash my face, my face is actually clean because I've cleaned it really well the night before, I am using the Argan Rosemary Facial Cleansing Oil. I tried using this at night for my nightly cleansing routine, didn't like it, but finding that I love it in the morning, put it on a cotton round and use this to clean my face. Of course, it doesn't leave my face dry because it's a cleansing oil. I bought this Rubus and Vitamin E Serum from Shea when I placed the order for the Around Eye Serum. I hadn't tried this before. This is a very thick serum, but this one is really working great first thing in the morning. It is such a thick oil that it doesn't even absorb all the way on me, so I really have to use the chamois to take off the excess. So this kind of one-two punch, this argan and rosemary cleansing oil, and then the Rubus vitamin E really seems to be doing some nice things in terms of keeping my skin hydrated. One complaint I have is that the argan and the green coffee and this raisin, rosemary, argan rosemary facial oil look really similar, I guess because they're both in the argan line, they're packaged together. You do not want this cleansing oil anywhere around your eyes. You do want the argan green coffee around eye serum near your eyes. It's very easy to confuse the two, so I wish the packaging were slightly different. I've also been playing with what I've put over the oil but before my facial balm. And I have been using this Hyaluronic Serogel by DeVita. Really, really like this product. It is pricey. I also had this Living Nature product from my Truth and Aging box. This one, however, is water-based, so I haven't been using it because I've been doing an experiment where I'm not using any water-based creams, any water-based products at all. And boy, has that made a difference with hydration. I'm just not having the drying out issues using an all oil regime. So I'm not using this right now. The other thing I have been trying this week is the original Purity Skin Care Raw Seeds Facial Jelly. This is a quarter ounce size. A two ounce size of this is $18, which is really about half the price of the DeVita. This is a one ounce for DeVita, so actually maybe a quarter of the price at the DeVita. What I've been noticing, and this surprises the heck out of me, is that my skin is not missing the hyaluronic acid. I don't know how that can be, because hyaluronic acid, obviously, moisture, 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 but the aloe vera and the little seed gels are doing brilliantly. My makeup goes on well. There's also not as much shedding after I use this. After I use this Cera Gel, I let it really sink in and then I take that chamois and go over it because there's almost always some shedding after I use this. No shedding after I'm using this Raw Seeds Facial Jelly. Both of them I'm mixing my vitamin C powder in and both of them work great with the vitamin C powder. I've had no problem with that at all. So that has been my regime this week. Using that Argan Facial Cleansing Oil using the vitamin E oil after that, then taking the excess off with the chamois, putting something like this or like this on, letting it sink in, taking that off with the chamois, and because it is 
uber cold. I am looking outside right now at a lot of snow. It's really, really cold temps, windy, the kind of stuff that just sucks the moisture right out of your face. Celtic complexion, cream it's called. It's actually an ointment or balm. Lovely. Really keeping my skin in good condition. And then what I'm noticing is foundations and concealers are working better. Hooray! This has just been, I know I've said it a couple of other times, but this has just been my best winter ever, ever, ever for my skin. So thrilled to discover that. Getting rid of the water-based creams, getting rid of any water-based products, going with 100% oil-based products. Holy cow, who would have thunk it? You know, who would have known? Probably somebody out there knew, but I didn't, and now I do, and what a difference it's making. Secondly, some really wonderful correspondence this week. I'm going to focus on two things. First of all, Suntegrity. I went to place my Suntegrity order. I had some issues with the goodie box code or with the website. Anyway, there was some issue. Went to place the order, went to use my debit card, and it got declined. Holy cow, what's that about? Found out my debit card was hacked. More strangely still, found out my husband's debit card was hacked. Very surprising because we don't have these associated in any way. These are our private individual checking accounts. So I'm not sure what's going on there. A little worrisome. Anyway, Suntegrity, absolutely a delight to work with, which always makes me feel good about buying the product when you have excellent customer service. Somebody sitting on the phone with me, working my way through, getting all the way through, having the credit card declined, saving the order till the next day, really just going the mile to figure out what was going on with the website, what was going on with the payment. I really thought ordering from Syntegrity was a joy. Elizabeth from Kiss My Stash wrote and thanked me for the video that I had done, but she wanted to talk to me about the calcium aluminum borosilicate issue in the lip glosses, which is fair enough. And she pointed out a couple of things. First of all, not all of her lip glosses have calcium aluminum borosilicate. This was thrilling news for me. I hadn't gone through and checked each one individually. She's only using it for the sparkly. She's not using it as a bulking agency. So that's pretty good because now I can in fact get that lip gloss when I'm off my no buy. And it is my favorite lip gloss. So I'm super excited to be able to buy the Kiss My Sass lip gloss because it's thick. I know I want to get the clear lip gloss. I think it's called Nothingness. Her lip gloss smells like marshmallows. It's thick. It's just perfect for me in terms of a lip gloss. As I use other lip glosses, I appreciate it more and more. I didn't want the calcium aluminum borosilicates. That's the only thing. Let me say a word about that. First of all, going natural is not like I'm 100% natural or I'm 0% natural. There's this spectrum. I've said it before, just get phenoxyethanol and parabens out of your product and you've done a long way towards going natural. So calcium aluminum borosilicate is going to bother some people. It's not going to bother others. It's not a problem in terms of penetrating the skin. It might be a problem in terms of inhaling it. It's basically a glass product. When it's processed, it has a tendency to become contaminated by lead, arsenic, and there is one other in there, I think maybe mercury, but I could be wrong on the mercury. But at any rate, it's a product that I'm not feeling particularly good about using, and I particularly don't want to ingest it. Don't really want to be breathing it, but don't want to ingest it. But a lot of companies use it for sparkle. I am going to be more aware of it in 2013. Some of my favorite companies are using it, and so I'm going to really have to start looking as I purchase products and be careful with it. Will I throw away anything in my collection that has it? Absolutely not. It's just going to be a purchasing decision from this point forward. What I will say about Elizabeth and Kiss My Sass is that she is somebody who is very, very serious about what she's putting in her products and very, very serious about making them. I appreciate that. I really like it. Will I purchase again from her? Absolutely. Absolutely loved the little College Life edition that I was talking about, that collection of pigments. But I'm really excited to be able to do the lip glosses. So I'm going to look for the ones without the calcium aluminum borosilicate. And I definitely, when I'm off my no buy, going to place my order there. I'm talking about natural products. I turn now because this is an oldie but toxic week for me. So what I will be using in terms of color this week. I decided I would pull out 
two product lines because they are similar in the sense that they are both direct sales or direct marketing lines. One is Mary Kay and I've told you before I have a friend that sells Mary Kay so I have a lot a lot of Mary Kay product. Mary Kay product is not clean by any stretch of the imagination. They don't list their ingredients on the website. Here are some of the eyeshadow pigments that I have and few more eyeshadow pigments and some blushes. So that will be one line that I'm using this week. The other line that I am going to be using this week is Pink Papaya. Pink Papaya is a really interesting direct sale line like Mary Kay. It really makes a claim to be natural and organic and for the most part when it comes to the color it is definitely definitely not. Full of BHT, full of phenoxyethanol, full of parabens, full of all sorts of things. However, I have some and so I'm going to use it. This product here is just some bare minerals that I pressed myself, but these are all my pink papaya colors. I've always really enjoyed this one particularly. They don't even make it anymore. My Mary Kay then and my pink papaya are the two lines I'm going to be using in my oldies but toxic week. I think that's it for this sample Sunday. As always, thank you so much for watching. Stay warm or if you're in Australia, stay cool. Please let me know what you're thinking and what you're up to. Make it a great, great week ahead. Bye.